Are you new to the Elder Scrolls Online? Welcome, and I've got 10 top tips for you. Hello, it's Icy, and yes, welcome to this wonderful world of Tamriel in the Elder Scrolls Online. I have 10 top tips that will help you let you find your feet in this amazing game. Tip number one, take your time, enjoy the place, enjoy what you find here, enjoy the locations, enjoy the quests, explore, have fun. There are so many wonderful things to see, amazing places to explore, really interesting characters, characters to talk to that if you rush your way through to start with you might miss some of those amazing experiences if you're uh, an existing mmo player coming from another game you might want to rush and that's fine you already know what kind of game you like but if you're new to mmos as i was when i started playing the elder scrolls online taking your time finding your feet is a real fun and enjoyable experience and I would recommend that you do it. Tip number two, start in the starting islands. If you're joining Elder Scrolls Online and making a new character, it's very likely that you'll start off in one of the new chapter locations. They're a great place to start, there'll be lots of other players around who can help, but if you're finding it just a teeny bit difficult, what I would recommend is that you try and find your way to one of the three starting islands. So those are Bleak Rock Isle or the Ebonheart Pact Alliance, uh, Kanathi's Roost for the Old Mary Dominion Alliance, and uh, Stross Mackay for the Daggerfall Covenant Alliance. Now you can get to these islands from your main starting alliance city. So I'm here right now in Vulkulgard in Oridon and if I head down to the dock uh, down here, if we look at the map even, you'll see there's a lot of anchor symbols and these anchors will get me off to one of the existing small, there we go, Kanathi's Roost. Uh, that will take me off to Kanathi's Roost and I can explore that starting island. The quests are still fantastic but the mobs and the monsters just a teeny bit easier has the advantage also that there's not necessarily many players around so if you're looking for a more solo experience that would be a great place to go so if you're in the Ebonheart Alliance you go to Stonefalls and Davin's Watch and if you're in the Daggerfall Covenant Alliance you go to Glenumbra and Daggerfall and then down to the docks there You'll also notice the other boats take you to other parts of the game. If you don't have an easy way to travel around, uh, these are a great way to find and explore and open the map up to find other places to get to. Tip number three, let the quests guide you through the zone. In each zone, there'll be a main quest. And the main quest is shown by the diamond symbol above this character. Speaking to this character will start me on the main quest for the Oridon region. Every region has a main quest. There are also side quests as well, uh, which you can see from the little triangle symbol as instead. Uh, they're all worth doing. Some uh, side quests will point off to other repeatable quests and some side quests are just complete quests and they finish on their own. Uh, if you're ever lost, or you're not sure what to do next, you can always come into your map and then into the zone guide on the side. And then you've got a button that either says start zone story or continue zone story. Clicking it will actually give you something that zooms you in on the map that shows you where you need to go next, which is a super helpful thing to do. Uh, and it's great also if you've just kind of wandered and found a new location and you just decide you want to quest there you can use start zone guide to find you and point you to the place that you need to start tip number four log in every day that you can and collect your daily rewards and train your horse you don't need to do anything more than that 
uh, you can collect your daily reward when you go to log out it'll actually give you an, an option but if you click on announcements uh, and then view rewards you'll have a daily reward for every day of the week usually around week three the end of week three there's a really big uh, reward which is super good sometimes it's gold sometimes it's characters all sorts of really interesting stuff uh, sometimes it's mounts very worthwhile trying to get that one but as you collect the rewards during the week you get all sorts of other useful things such as the very good food that you can use for your character research scrolls experience scrolls poisons healing potions all sorts of just general useful things often gold sometimes alliance points uh, things that your character can use almost all of the things in here are actually particularly useful if you're new to the game it's really worthwhile even if you don't have time to do anything else that day just log in and collect your rewards the other thing i would suggest you do is you come and train your horse or actually technically your riding ability visit any uh any stable master and put a point into costing 250 gold into any one of the three abilities you can only train one at a time uh, you can only train every 20 hours so it does take a long time to train all of them you can buy mount speed boosts for crowns but if you're here for a while and you're patient you can absolutely do it all for gold uh, to start off with you won't have a mount and that's okay uh, early on you in the leveling rewards so each level that you go up you'll also get a reward you'll actually get a free mount so don't worry about saving up the gold the 42,000 gold to get one of these horses you'll actually get a free perfectly serviceable mount fairly early on tip number five make sure that your character eats something they get hungry but actually your character has a certain amount of health so my character their maximum health right now uh, is 14,000 roughly uh, lower level characters actually have a little extra health as well um, and so that it makes it easier to stay alive however you can increase that health again by actually eating food for your character so uh, in the previous section we talked about the crown fortifying meal these are really good if you're just doing air questing uh dungeons uh any kind of general content these are fantastic having one you'll see but all of my health goes up to twenty thousand, and my magicka and stamina also go up as well very worthwhile doing uh your the game is designed for your characters to have some sort of food to boost them up. If you're running around and you're dying a lot, make sure that you check if that you've got food running for your character. If you don't have the purple stuff, which you should very quickly, you can actually steal it. You can steal food from places like this, uh, but you can actually just buy it off uh, the chefs and the brewers as well will sell food to you but you can find uh, basic food just floating around in the world as well like uh, some of these things are food and some of these are crafting ingredients but all of these uh, can be used tip six start crafting you're going to be playing the game for a while even if it's just every you know a couple of hours a week you should think about starting to learn how to make your own gear so your own food your own potions uh, your own weapons and armor all of those things can be done uh, in the main starting cities and also the chapters uh, there will be a couple of quest givers uh, in the crafting area who will give you a quest to start you out on your learning journey uh, and that will help you like right here you can see one for me uh, that will teach you the basics of each of the different crafting trees uh, if you need to learn how to make jewelry you'll need to get to somerset so you will probably need to own that chapter uh, to unlock that one as well so you can i would recommend that you sell any white equipment that you pick up 
and deconstruct everything else. So that will give you the best combination between gold and materials that you can make your own gear. Uh, and you will find in the end, especially if you're going to be in the game for a little while, it will help make you money. Uh, it's expensive to keep buying gear and equipment either from in-game vendors or other players. It's much cheaper overall and a very satisfying to be able to make your own. Step 7 which leads in from the previous one, keep your weapons at the same, almost at the same level as your character. Experience gained in this game, apart from the experience from quests, is usually uh, related to the amount of things you kill. Uh, the amount of things you kill is related to the amount of damage that you're doing. You can do more damage if you increase, make sure that your weapons are roughly the same level as you. So your armor, has a level uh, you want to keep that pretty much the same level as you as you're leveling up don't let your weapons get more than five levels lower than you are otherwise you're losing too much damage it will help you be more effective uh, and help you get through the content better and help you have more fun as well it's no fun when you feel underpowered do you also need to upgrade your armor hmm not as much as your weapons, uh, but you should try maybe every five to ten levels, you should try and upgrade your armor as well. Tip eight, try and wear a complete set of armor. In each zone that you're in, we'll drop three different sorts of armor. So there'll usually be one heavy set, one medium set, one light set. If you're Try and wear a complete set. Uh, the more pieces from a set that you wear, the more bonuses you'll get from that set. For example, the Mother Sorrow set, which is a very popular set for magic casters and is available as an overland set from Dashan, uh, will give me maximum magicka if I'm wearing two pieces, extra spell critical if I'm wearing three pieces, extra spell critical again, four pieces, and a lot of extra critical for five pieces. That's a set, if I keep everything within that set and make sure I'm wearing five pieces at all times, it gives me even, makes the game even easier for me to do because I'm actually doing a lot more damage. Uh, in general, heavy sets will help uh, your health abilities, medium sets will help your stamina abilities, and light sets help your magic abilities. Try, if you're a magic user, try and stick with light sets. If you're a bow sword user, try and stick with medium sets. And if you're planning to be a tank, try and stick with the heavy sets. Though, do keep in mind, if you're choosing to be a tank or a healer, uh, you will be doing less damage, so I would recommend that you still, on your back bar, because you can have two weapons, still put a damage type weapon on the back bar so that you can keep up your XP generation. Tip number nine, use the skills advisor. When you go into your character's skills, there is an actual skills advisor that can give you hints as to which skills are probably, not always, but probably going to be helpful for your character. So if you come over to the gear icon and choose it, you can give, you can tell the skills advisor what kind of character you want to play. So this character is a Templar, and I would prefer for her to be a damage role. So I can actually choose the Gleaming Champion and then the Skills Advisor will put a heavy box around the skills that it thinks would be helpful for me to unlock first, including these passive skills here. So these are the ones that if I wanted to play a damage character, I would make sure that I unlock first. Other options are a uh, Stamina Damage Dealer rather than a Magicka one, a Tank, so somebody who's going up to the face of the baddies and <laughs> hitting them and making them attack you, so high health, uh, a healer, uh, or you can just turn it off entirely as well. So um, this is great, It's this is available for all classes, and if you go and look at some builds, many of these will be different, but this is an excellent starting point for your journey. And 
finally, tip number 10. Don't worry if you make a mistake. This game is very, very forgiving uh, and it's set up specifically to let you be free to make choices and then change your mind later and whether that's because you decided you didn't like the way the character played you want to change from being a magic caster to a stamina player you decide that you want to try healing uh, all sorts of things there are many ways to change what you're doing in this game either on the same character or it's actually very easy to make a new character. So in each of the major, each of the chapters and three of the major towns in the original game, there are these shrines. These shrines will let you at any time for gold uh, change which skills you've got. So you can unspec, so remove uh, the skills entirely and then change it to a different skill. Uh, this is great if you don't have enough skill points as well because and you want to try something else uh, you can do this the other thing you can uh, just want to yes I want to leave I don't want to change that you can also change your attributes so oh <laughs> I've changed my attributes <laughs> So your attributes are your stamina, health, and magicka. So once you're full level, you probably want to put all of them into the attribute that best suits your class. But while you're leveling, you might want more attributes into health. Uh, but at, uh, I think, around level 47, uh, you'll actually get two scrolls, one to chain, reset all of your skill points and one to set reset all of your attributes. So at that point, you don't even need to pay for it. You're actually given the opportunity to do that for free. So this game really is very friendly. You don't need to worry about making the wrong choices or changing your mind later. You can change from a stamina character to a magicka character and back again, which I've actually done myself. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below and I'll endeavour to answer them. Uh, come follow me over on twitch.tv slash ICYIC where I stream this fantastic game as often as I can. Uh, and I'd love to answer your questions over there as well. I'm a member of the ESO stream team, which means I have giveaways and also drops on occasionally as well, which give you extra free stuff within the game. Uh, I love this game. I'd love to see you here too. Thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you next time.